global warming isn't killing anyone and it isn't going to kill anyone. What is killing people and killing them by the million of starvation now is the effect of the global warming scare. Because many nations, including the United States, have taken up to a third of their agricultural land out from growing food for people who needed it to growing biofuels for clunkers that didn't. And that has meant in the last year or two a doubling, and I mean a doubling, of world food prices. And the World Bank says that, that nearly all of that doubling of world food prices is directly attributed to the biofuel scam, which in turn is directly caused by the global warming scare and governments saying, well, even if it isn't true, we've got to take precautions. But you have to remember, you also have to take precautions to check that the precautions you're taking are not killing people by the billions, which is what this policy of biofuels is actually doing. major food riots in a dozen regions of the world. Hardly reported at all in the West. The protesters blame soaring food prices for the violence that has paralyzed the capital Port-au-Prince. Take Haiti, where they live on mud pie, made with real mud. That's what they're living on, or rather dying in Haiti now. Now we dread fire. Africa has coal and Africa has oil. But environmental groups are campaigning against the use of these cheap sources of energy. Instead, they say Africa and the rest of the developing world should use solar and wind power. To former environmentalist Paul Dreeson, the idea that the world's poorest people should be restricted to using the world's most expensive and inefficient forms of electrical generation is the most morally repugnant aspect of the global warming campaign. Let me make one thing perfectly clear. If we're telling the third world that they can only have wind and solar power. What we are really telling them is you cannot have electricity. The only electrical implements in the clinic are the electric lights and a refrigerator in which to keep vaccines, medicine and blood samples. Electricity is provided by two solar panels. The solar panels allow Dr. Samuel Mwangi to use either the lights or the refrigerator, but not both at the same time. If he does, the electricity shuts down. Wind and solar power are notoriously unreliable as a source of electricity, and are at least three times more expensive than conventional forms of electrical generation. The rich countries can afford to engage in some luxurious experimentation with other forms of energy. But for us, we are still at a stage of survival. There is a direct correlation between the amount of CO2 that you burn in a nation per head of population and the longevity and prosperity of the population. The more CO2 you burn, the longer you live. The less CO2 you burn, the more your children die young. These figures are absolutely plain, and it is an outrage that people like Tony dare to say that they want to stop the world from burning CO2 when they must know that the consequence of that policy will be to do what is already happening, to kill people in the poorer countries who need above all else to use fossil fuels to lift themselves out of poverty. 
you're being told, don't touch your vessels. Don't touch your oil. Don't touch your coal. That is suicide. The environmental movement has evolved into the strongest force there is for preventing development in the developing country. I think it's legitimate for me to call them anti-human. Well, we've had people like James Hansen, you've just quoted him, saying that people like me should be placed on trial for high crimes against humanity. Hey, I'm not the person killing people by starvation worldwide because of mad policies based on bad science. That's what they're doing. And they have got to go on trial for high crimes against humanity because what they have been doing is they have been recklessly and deliberately making up science falsifying science, then doing their best to use the cover of the Data Protection Act and um, government privilege to prevent people from other scientists legitimately asking to get the data which they then said they would destroy rather than giving it out. It is at every level a howling outbreak. And the fraud is so obvious where they were saying global cooling, then it was global warming, now they say climate change, the oceans are going to turn into acid. I, I, I mean, they keep saying the science is all settled when they're all manifest quack frauds. Modern eugenicists want to cut off industrial development to the third world that will result in untold starvation, death, and misery. People who have absolutely no moral principle, they don't care how many people they kill with their policies. They don't care that countries of the third world are going to be poor and are going to be starved. I think this, there is certainly an element of deliberate desire to control populations by killing people in large numbers deliberately if necessary. Whether it's Kissinger or Ehrlich or Holdren or Prince Philip or Ted Turner or Jacques Cousteau, all they, or Dr. Eric Bianca or Peter Singer, all they talk about is setting up a planetary regime. Laura Vidal, 1969 Playboy magazine interview about how we need a global government to kill these people. I think that emerges from the whole uh, environmental debate is the point that uh, there's, there's, there's somebody keen to kill the African dream, and the African dream is to develop.